right. Well, IDK is, uh, is, uh, is starting. Maybe I'll just uh, cover this slide. So I'm, I'm red. Bunga, I'm also like one of the maintainer of the Forest project, so that, that's convenient. Um, uh, so this, this project aims at uh, bringing automatic machine learning based open source tool to help operators manage their mission to actually um, monitor and understand what's happening on the spacecraft and the when there is an anomaly. Um, this is a global team uh, working on it from Canada to India, we like to say it because when you're in the chat, you always have uh, somebody who can answer uh, your questions. So that's uh, it's interesting. And it's uh, it's supported now and part of the Liberal Space Foundation. And it started as an idea from the open source CubeSat workshop in 2018. Um, okay, next slide. Next slide, I'll just take printing. Dika, tell me when you're when you're in. Going on. So um, in, inside that too, we use different different uh, uh, other tools to to tweak the, the machine learning. Yeah, yeah, Peter, I heard you. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and and you can you can take uh, you can take it, uh, in Peter too. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, no uh, worries. I'll finish that slide and then uh, and then you go. Ahead. So there, there, there are different tools like HGBoost for uh, extreme gradient boosting. It's an open source uh, library. TensorFlow, it's an open source library to build uh, neural network architectures. But then we also have the, the front end, which is uh, based on ReactJS and 3GS uh, for the 3D graph that we, we shown last year. Um, then we also use uh, Satnox uh, as our main data source. And also we use NOAA and S SWPC for the space weather events. So because the tool is not just only on telemetry, it's also like making links with what's happening in space. So we could, uh, I mean, the goal is to really explain the anomalies uh, to the point as say, oh, there was a flare from the sun. So your, your spacecraft reacted that way. And we also use polyastro for providing orbits to understand where, where you are and what, what's your speed, uh, et cetera. And, uh, and maybe you know, extract uh, relevant uh, input from that. Uh, and then uh, uh, on the next slide, uh, Jan Peter will, will continue. You can turn on your camera and uh, we'll summarize what we did last year present and uh, because this is a state of Polaris uh, presentation. And Peter, if you're here, oh no, you're not here, you're disconnected. Okay, <laughs> I, will, I will continue. Uh, why for scratch? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, it's, it's meant for me to be presenting that. Okay, uh, thanks for preparing the slides. I did chat, it was amazing. Uh, so, what we presented last year is, uh, is a Polaris generator dependence, dependency graph. That's this 3D view, which is uh, based on, uh, on the WebGL2, uh, based on 3GS. Um, and, and what it means, so the, the nodes are, are telemetry measures, and the links are dependencies that are calculated uh, thanks to machine learning. Uh, it permits us to 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 find nonlinear dependencies, uh, which you would not find with the classical mathematical correlation. And we had a close co a collaboration with the Bobcat One team, uh, with people inside the the, the parts who joined the the project to uh, you know, feedback and actually help a lot. Uh, we have a presentation here on the YouTube link. You can you can find on the presentation afterwards. So why why did we build Polaris? So um, so why why Polaris? So Polaris is machine learning tool for for operations. So uh, first uh, to uh, yeah there, there are many things, but the thing is that the, the main the main uh, the main goal is that today you're you're managing one spacecraft, and and eventually in the future you'll be an operator of of hundreds of thousands of spacecraft. And you can't do that without a good uh, artificial intelligence uh, friend that would be Polaris, hopefully. Um, so, uh, so we do that because we love to work with operators. That, that's good. We we like to save time, uh, also uh, to find you know the anomalies also, uh, and uh, and it's and we're trying to make it easy to set up so you can you can connect to your own data source for telemetry and get the, a good visual output uh, for this. Uh, and um, and and why you should use that is because of all this, yeah. So and it's also integrated. It's helping you integrate your telemetry with the space weather data and all the auxiliary information that is in space, not related directly. I mean, not 
from your spacecraft, external source of data. So, um, why are pictures so big? So, um, uh, we have a simple uh, comment for robust visualization so that you know you, you just do that comment so you don't uh, you don't have to to find out how to do the visualization because we have a fetch part which gets the data uh, in, in, in a JSON form and you just need your satellite uh, ID number and that's uh, that's that's uh, we found that convenient uh, from time to time, but happy to get your feedback on that. And then you have learn comment. So uh, we're we're working on that. We're we're working that to get it more modular. But at the moment, you can learn the dependencies like that. Only the dependencies. You know? And you output a graph, which is also in JSON that you can visualize uh, thanks to PowerSBs. Or if you want to uh, to detect uh, your the different behavior of your spacecraft and to display them, then you have a comment which is Polaris behave. And you take the the same output data from from the fetch comment, and you get a JSON. And this time you get a report. And finally, the report is going to be uh, more like our React JS uh, full app, which is going to show everything, including the graph. But for now, there there are two decorrelated uh, tools at the moment. Aditya, I see you're back. It's amazing. How can we? Hear yeah, you? sorry about that. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah, I might have soon after. I don't care. It's better. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you you can continue. Yeah. Okay. 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 I will continue then. Uh, uh, Jan Peter wanted to take it, but uh, I don't. I don't think. Uh, okay. Anomaly detection. So, uh, focus on anomaly detection visualization. Um, so. What we do for anomaly detection is that we uh, order the data group by windows. So that's a classical approach when you want to you, you want to check different uh, different uh, you know segments and different behavior in your in your in your telemetry in your spacecraft, and you don't know what is the breakpoints. We're actually trying to build a, a tool that detects those breakpoints between the behavior. So we have a neural network model which is an autoencoder that tries to reproduce these windows of data. So it's reproducing the whole telemetry set uh, on those windows. And as soon as there is an internal representation in this uh, neural network that changes too much, uh, we, we flag that as a big deviation. So there is a maximum local deviation. And for us, it's a behavioral breakpoint. Let's consider that such as a behavioral breakpoint. So a neural network watching all the telemetry kind of detects those breakpoints from, uh, by, by incrementing in time like that. And, um, and, and what's happening is that we have the output uh, to Polaris report in, on this interactive web page. And you could see uh, the main statistics. So you could see that, uh, which telemetry impacts the most, uh, the behavior analysis. And I'm not sure, um, I see what, what's over there. You could have a light, light and dark mode, but what, what's interesting is this, uh, this graph of stack telemetry. So um, the, the, telemetry, the telemetries are normalized, and we separated um, uh, positive and negative uh, telemetry. Correct me if I'm wrong, Aditya. So that's why you have, like, it seems like you have a reflection of, uh, of, of graph, but on top you have the, the positive stacked telemetry, normalized telemetry, and the negative stacked telemetry on the bottom. It permits us to have some kind of a view of, you know, if yeah, something different is happening, you know, if you have like, Temperature rising at some point, you will have a peak. Temperatures decreasing, you have a you have a down peak. Uh, those kind of things, and and our tool actually detected breakpoints that we draw on this picture. Uh, you have you have some breakpoints that are in uh, in red lines. They're all in red lines, uh, thin red lines. But you have like bigger breakpoints that are the breakpoints where the the um, uh, the difference is big in the, in the neural network internal representation. And, and we're trying to make sense of that at the moment. So we are discussing with the operators, trying to see, okay, what happened there, uh, between there and there. Uh, at some point, it made sense. So we had like a lot of sense uh, made with Bobcat one, for instance. Uh, at some other points, we, we don't know exactly. So that might be, you know, uh, just just a, a mistake. There is no really a behavioral change, but we can learn from that, uh, or something that happened and nobody's really aware of. 
So that's also interesting in that sense. Until what time do I have? Like you know, I have 10, min 10 more minutes? Oh, two minutes, I think. Uh, Mantos appeared. <laughs> I don't hear you. Okay, visualization of okay, okay. Uh, anomaly. <laughs> Yeah, you just uh, uh, just past the twelve minutes, but you can continue a bit more. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, make, yeah. uh, I'll make it quick so uh, I want the interaction to go on. Uh, yeah. So we have more more visualization. Like uh, you can choose some telemetries once you know there is an issue. So you could see the stack uh, the stack version, um, and then uh, we could merge those plots of telemetries to see what, what, what they do. It's all in the the, the report page. Well, in conclusion, what we want from you is that you try that tool. That would be amazing. So to get your feedback, uh, pip install Paris ml We are we're trying to release that quite often. Uh, at the moment, since the summer, we're trying to re-architecture everything. So that's uh, that's uh, that's a work in progress at the moment. But feel free to join us uh, on the Paris channel, and we'd love to have your feedback, features you love. Uh, if Polaris helps you uh, in detecting anomalies and, and characterizing anomalies and what didn't work so well. Yeah. Uh, and if you have questions, we're here to answer. We have this uh, bunch of team and, and yeah, and we're trying to be always present at the open source cubes at workshop. We have to, right? So but still on time. <laughs> yeah, <right>. Still on time. <laughs> so there is, there is one question in the chat. Uh, it says, uh, Jean, and ask if uh, are you able to run and uh, feed Polaris with real time telemetry coming in? Yeah, so um, at the moment we are we're not supporting streams, but we want to go there because the, the goal of supporting streams is that you could also be on, on board, you could move on board. Aditya did a super interesting study with the Polytechnic Montreal on uh, actually pruning neural networks. I mean, it was not correlated to Polaris, but that's something we could use. Um, and uh, and meaning that we could achieve the same performances with less uh, less than neurons, but uh, that's not what it is. But uh, it's pretty much that. So meaning that you have a, a smaller footprint, computing footprint, and uh, and therefore you could uh, you could be on board. But real time telemetry coming in, yeah, that's the thing. The, the thing is that what is real time for a satellite is every time you have data dumps. Yeah, so I think you mean on board. Mm -hmm. I have a question, and uh, uh, my question is: uh, Do you some somehow share uh, knowledge between satellites and subsystems, and do you have a way to uh, I don't know to, to to learn from one satellite and then transfer this knowledge on other satellites or generalizing the knowledge? Yeah, yeah. So, so we 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 have this dependency graph where we have telemetry by telemetry. We want to add a semantic layer. Where we, we we know which which subsystem uh, is holding that telemetry, so that we could actually learn that you know heating subsystem is doing that, or the battery is doing that, and if you have the battery of the same brand, actually we could eventually uh, we we are we're trying to do that. We could see the signature of that battery, you know, power consumption, uh, current fluctuation, all those kind of things, and detect that you actually have the same kind of battery, and eventually like confirm that with the operators all the, the system engineers and, and then trying to learn you know for what happened on that battery on this other spacecraft on that other spacecraft um this is something we'd love to do um since uh, you know many of the subsystem are reused here and there so i think we believe we, we can do that uh, so i don't to yeah, yeah sorry so i don't to what red was saying uh one more thing is that the dependency graph allows you to find out these relationships between subsystems so if you are using, say, the same kind of battery and uh, your power system board or something, you can essentially find a relation between those and you, you have a model for the whole subsystem as a subgraph in Polar. So um, yeah, it will be very valuable to extract that as well. OK, so you can even detect an anomaly that uh, the, this kind of this uh, specific battery is not uh, working as supposed to as yeah, as the other batteries of, of its kind. Yeah. Yes. So um, okay. for that, what we what we did was uh, during our uh, during a proposal which we submitted, we found out these breakpoints, found out the dependency graph before and after the breakpoint. So when you compare these two graphs, you kind of have an understanding of how the relation between subsystems are changing. 
uh, and that will kind of tell you what is underperforming or overperforming or what's giving you the issues so uh, for for example the satellite we in, in the satellite we analyzed there was some thermal issues which are happening which was uh, kind of related to the power budget or something so uh, that was a interesting insight which we got just by doing an automatic analysis okay we're, we're, i think we're not too far to be able to i mean we'd love to say uh, if you to do some prognostic like if you continue to use your spacecraft like that the battery the battery current is going to fail or something so, because we learn from the anomalies from others, that would be, that would be fun. And and using SatNux is amazing because now, I mean, uh, we've seen yesterday seven seven hundred uh, uh, missions. We don't have the decoders for all of them, but uh, I mean that's a lot of uh, matter to learn from. Cool, cool. So, ha have you used any of those data to train any system already? Yeah, we have trained on. Go on. We have trained on LightSail 2 as well as Bobcat 1 and Offsat. So these are the three major sat satellites and uh, we had done a preliminary analysis on Cubic as well before before the launch. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the advantage of Polaris is you only need the decoder to be present on sa in SatNox. That's all you need. You can just integrate it with Polaris. You can, there's a parameter, like if you want to, um, Find out, give the actual values of your parameters to Polaris. You just need to create create a normalizer file. If you don't want that, there's an option to skip the normalizer. So it, it's if you have everything set up for Satnox already, you can just plug Polaris into your workflow and just test it test it out using just one command. Yeah, that's true. Awesome, awesome. So if you if you uh, we we got requests from uh, from people in bigger companies with bigger spacecraft. And, and we, we also manage a way to input a CSV file, so we're not connected to their database because it's too custom made. And uh, but uh, yeah, we can always uh, do differently, not just in SatNox. SatNox is covered. It's cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, do you ha have in mind to integrating any CCSDS uh, protocol in order to connect in this kind of uh, database and streams and more? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, that's uh, it's in there. That's, that's in the pipe. <laughs> 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 we need more people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, more hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. Uh, uh, Antithia's microphone started to work, uh, working perfectly after the presentation. So, <laughs> so I don't know what <laughs> happened. <laughs> Someone makes fun of you. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you, Red. And uh, oh, Aditya again, his internet is down. No, okay. Thank you. We thank you. And